Okay, so here we are in the final stages of finishing this one up, and I really love how it's looking. It's just a riot of color, which just makes me happy. Um, so I wanted to point out one of the grand benefits of using good paper. If you remember when we painted the background here in the moon area, my paper had bubbled up like this when it was wet. And as you can see now, everything is completely flat. So um, watercolor paper, good watercolor paper, will buckle because it's expanding to take in the water and the paint. Once it is dry, it will go back to flat, unless you've added massive, massive quantities of water. Um, so just something to keep in mind. It's, um, it really does make a difference what kind of paper that you use. Okay, so let's get started on our trees. We'll do the one in the background first um, because it's gonna be just slightly darker to show that it's behind the other one. And we start off with a little water. Just like we did our bushes, I'm just kind of wetting the interior. I'm not using a lot of water. It's just, um, just a little to make sure that that paint flows. And now I'm going to come in with my green and go right up to the edge and let that paint flow. As I come down to the base, the tree is going to get darker at the base because the light here is shining on the tree um, and then as it goes down to the base it's going to move into shadow. So I'm going to grab now a little phthalo, maybe even a little turquoise, and just add that color in. And oftentimes what you'll see me do is I go in with um, pretty intense color. So that's pretty intense. Then I wipe off my brush, so I'm wiping off pigment, and I'll move it and start to blend it. Um, so that's one of the things that I do to kind of blend paints together. I just keep wiping my brush off and then I can just kind of blend things together. I'm going to add a little mauve down to the end here so it gets really much darker. And for the trunk, I wipe off and I'm just going to pull this color down into the trunk. Maybe grab a little more mauve. This part really, really, truly doesn't matter because we're actually going to come back with some white um, watercolor and put in these little tree trunks. So not a big deal. You just don't want to get this too dark because we've got to be able to cover it later. So just going to add a little color into there. Clean up my edges here. And that tree is done for now until we add the trunk. So while that's drying, we can go ahead and move on to the house. I'm using a really small brush. This is a one. I'm going into my phthalo blue. Just This is just a shadow color. Um, very little you can see. I just add some slight shadow to the house. Um, but you could choose your mauve, your pink, even um, any color for a shadow. So I come right under this roof line and just do a small line on both sides to represent that roof. I stick my brush in my water, tap it off a little, and then just pull that color down into the entire house. Maybe even getting lighter. So I dipped, dabbed, <laughs> dip, dab, and now I'm gonna pull it down some more. So as I come down the house and you can paint right over the windows and right over the door because they'll be darker. I just come all the way down so you can see how it's kind of like an ombre effect. It's a little more intense up here and it gets lighter as it goes down. I can add a little teeny bit more blue up here just to kind of give it the indication of having some sh shadow. Um, I also sometimes, if it's not showing up or if I've got some unclean lines here, I take, and this is even a smaller brush, I think, yeah, this is a zero, 
and I just kind of outline the edge of the roof, the top of the roof. Um, feel free, you don't have to use a paintbrush for this. You don't have to use paint for this. If you don't feel comfortable with it, take a colored pencil, watercolor pencil, sharpen it really well, and do the same exact thing. There's no such thing as cheating. <laughs> Just do it the way you want to do it. Okay, so that's pretty much um, for getting color on the house. Once it dries, we can color in the windows and the door and we'll um, fix our little chimney there. So while that's drying and while this tree is still drying, I can show you how to put in the path here and add those that tree line in the back. I'll show you that as well. So I have this super cheap, I don't even know where I got this, but it is a small flat brush. Um, and I just find it works better to scrub paint away, but you can totally use any of your rounds too. They, they work just as well. Um, I just don't like to use my nice rounds for when I'm scrubbing because it's rough on the brush. So whatever brush you choose, um, just choose one that's not your favorite and just kind of always keep it as your scrubber brush. So the way you do this, you get your brush a little wet, you have a paper towel in hand, and I'm just going to start to push pigment out of the way. I've just got that clean water on my brush and I'm just pushing pigment out of the way and creating that little path there. And as you do this, obviously you're picking up pigment as well as pushing it away. So now I have pigment on my brush, so you constantly have to clean it off. And once you've got the area kind of wet, then you can take your paper towel and just push it right on top. And it will take the wetness away and take the paint away. So now I've got a nice little path there that leads right to my cute little house. And you'll do the same thing back here for the bushes. So all I'm doing, just kind of decide where you want your bushes to go. If you want to draw it in, you totally can. The only thing I don't want to mess with is this glow here. So I'm going to come up about this far and I'm just making circles that kind of meet with each other mimicking the shape of these popsicle tree bushes and trees that we already have. So just make some circle shapes and then pull out the color. And this works best when you kind of have a dark background. Obviously if you tried to wipe paint away and you've got a really really light area it's not going to show up quite as well. And you can see how you've got some pigment left, obviously, on your paper. You're not going to be able to get right back down to a white paper. Um, but for this, it works because that's what's going to make these look muted and in the background. And I think I'm going to add some over here as well. This is also something that's really difficult to do on um, inexpensive paper. You start to rub and you'll start to rub the fiber of the paper away. It makes it really frustrating. So once you have it rubbed out, you don't really have to wait for it to fully dry. Now I'm just going into my green gold and I'm gonna start painting in the tops of the trees there. You don't need to wet this area first. So 
So just laying down some of that green color. And then I'm going to rinse my brush off. Grab just a tiny, tiny bit of this blue and start working that in with the green. Now completely rinse your brush off and dry off most of the moisture and you just keep bringing this color down. Continually washing and dabbing off your brush and just lightly fade it into that purple glow because we don't want to we don't want to lose that and the same thing over here Right, there you go. So that's how you do that. Now, once you've um, done all that, your tree back here will probably be dry enough that we can start on this front tree. So I'm just gonna, actually I'll use a little bigger brush, not quite that small. Adding just a little water to the interior. And going in with my green. You can see how um, we needed to make this one a little darker so that this edge on this tree will really come forward. So once I've got the green, then I can start adding a little darker. Plop some of that color. Remember I wipe off a little and just start moving it, spreading it around. You can add a little mauve at the bottom here. And just bring that down to the base. And just paint in a trunk. Alright, so we've got that in. This is now, I believe, dry enough that we can take a small, small brush. And I'm just going to go in with a little phthalo, a little mauve, and just paint these teeny tiny windows in. Just little rectangles. And my teeny tiny door here. And once this is also dry, you can, now that you've scrubbed the color off, you can add a little color to this road if you want. So I'm just going to add a little mauve to mine. Just to kind of blend it in, give it some more color, because goodness knows we don't have enough color on this painting, right? There we go. Okay, so the very last thing I have a, do you see this where I dropped water here? I'm famous for this. Um, so this is good uh, that it happened actually. So if something like that happens, your first response to, is to say, oh no, I've ruined the whole painting. But I look at these as opportunities to 
expand my painting vocabulary. So instead of freaking out and trying to fix it, I'm just going to work with it. I'm going to drop some green right into it, and I'm going to add some more splashes here and there. And all of a sudden, it'll look like you meant to do it. I'm even going to take some mauve here. Just start dropping in color. Worst case scenario, when it dries, if it really looks crummy while it, when it dries, um, you can use that same technique of blotting out. So it's always better to kind of wait for it to dry anyway. So you um, just blot out the color and try to kind of start over. Um, but I think this is actually going to work out fine. It's, it's not going to be noticeable. So don't worry when <laughs> these crazy things happen and when ants are crawling all over your painting. Um, it's all part of the process. Painting is a absolute fun thing to do if you just get the right mindset about it as, you know, you really, it's just like life. How much control do you really have? Not much. Um, you kind of have to go with the flow and, you know, just do the best you can in the moment. A great metaphor for life. So I think I've got that fixed well enough. It actually looks better than it did before. So I'm going to let it dry and then I'll show you how to put in the trunks and we will be completely done with this painting.